I just came off of watching Cindy at Reads with Cindy or with Cindy, I think is her channel now. Her Asian Readathon announcement video, and I'm so excited because I was looking forward to this. I felt like Okay, we getting close to May. It's almost like a week or something like that out. Like, uh, I don't know if read Asian readathon is gonna happen this year. But similarly, the same thing happened with Blackathon. It kind of cut really close to the readathon month that it was gonna happen on. And I, I think because we just came out of 2020, that kind of pushed things back a bit. But I'm so glad that the Asian readathon is happening this year. I was excited because I was already like, even if it doesn't happen, I'm still going to be reading something for Asian, well, from my understanding, it's Asian American and Pacific Islanders Month, but to me, I kind of just read it as Asian and Pacific Islanders Heritage Month. I, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to Google that and look that up and do my research, you know what I'm saying? I got to do what I got to do, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to be reading for... Asian readathon. I am going to be reading books by Asian authors and I will be participating. I have the prompt. Well, I know what the prompts are. They're pretty simple. It's like read a book by an Asian author, read a book uh, with an Asian protagonist, I believe is the second one. Either way, it's very simple, girl. Oh, but I know, do know the third one is read an Asian story from one of your favorite genres. I don't really think I have a favorite genre. If like messy stories with just like mess and drama in it, like just messy drama in it is like a genre, I need to know what that is. Or at least I need to find that section of the, I don't know, of the, the bookstore. Like I need to find that because I like mess and drama in my books, okay? Whether it's fantasy, whether it's, it's it's science fiction, just give me mess. Give me the mess, whether it's political entry, give me mess in the story, drama, people doing all kinds of mess. But either way, I can't really put a book to a prompt right now. I already kind of planned a certain set of books, so I'm gonna read those books, but I'll try to integrate some more books into it to go along with the readathon. I went through the Asian readathon reading list just to um, see if I could find anything else that I wanted. I definitely want to read a book by an Asian author that does not center America or is not an American centric story. I had to go look through and try and see if I could find anything that's a translator work. I looked through the list. I didn't find anything that I really wanted to read for this month because I'm still trying to keep my reading light for the month. And I'm currently in the midst of rereading the Grisha trilogy, which, from going through the reading list, I realized that because Lee Bardugo is of Israeli ethnicity, of Israeli heritage, she is also Asian. That brings me to, I will be reading the Six of Crows, maybe the duology, but definitely Six of Crows itself because I will be watching the Shadow and Bone Netflix series, which I'm so looking forward to. I already read this the first time, but I really want to re-experience it, kind of reacquaint myself before I watch the show. And it all kind of just kind of still works out that like for Asian Readathon, I can, because I was still going to read this anyway, along with the other books by Asian authors that I want to read, but finding out that Lee Bardugo being Israeli and Israeli also being a part of the Asian diaspora, it all kind of comes together that I will be able to read Six of Curls, possibly try to include Crooked Kingdom. We'll see how it goes. Along with that, I am going to finally start An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I wanted to read this, I think, for last year or the year before the Asian Readers on then. I'm finally gonna read this. I'm looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to reading this for the longest. Ever since I read like a sample of like the first chapter and it left off on this little cliffhanger, I was like, ooh, I'm in it. I'm intrigued. You got me. I'm ready. I'm ready to start. It's time. It's due. It's due date. Also for the Asian Readathon and for the month of May, I will be reading, well, I will restart Skim by Mariko Tamaki and Jillian Tamaki. I initially started reading this, what, like last year, but I kind of like, I really was trying to savor it, but I was also just trying to pay attention to reading it. Although it's a short read, I really wanted to focus on reading it because of how the the story is told and the art style. So far from what I'm reading, it kind of reminds me of the craft, the 90s craft. I'm excited about this. Although this is written by a white author, Invincible by Robert Kirkman and Corey Walker, Penciler and anchor Ryan Otley and Bill Crabtree. I will be restarting this, rereading this, because I read all the way down to like what would be considered the last chapter of the book, uh, which 
technically, I think, would be the last comic book in this first volume run or whatever. Well, I read to the beginning of that last chapter. Now I'm gonna reread it. The Invincible series is out on Amazon, so I really want to watch that. Although this is not written and I'm not sure there is anybody, yeah, there is nobody Asian on this entire creative staff for this book. It is a story about a Asian American. Is he Asian American? I mean, he's an alien, but he's of Asian, like his mother is Asian. like. It is very, like, in the show itself, it is more explicitly, like, Stephen Ewing is Invincible's voice actor on the show. And Sandra Oh is the voice actor for his mother. And although it was kind of vague on, in the artwork that his mother is Asian and that, his, that he's Asian, it, it's, it's there. It's there. They are Asian. They are canonically Asian. This would be on the lower, I guess, we could say like on the lower end of the Asian readathon spectrum because it is not a team of Asian creators that are behind the story, but it is a story about an Asian character. I definitely want to catch up on Invincible. I have not started watching it because I want to finish this and chances are I will read the second volume of Invincible because from my because from what it looks like I feel like they blaze through this volume and they blaze all the way into the next volume in the show. I don't want to watch the show and then get spoiled for what's in the actual comic, so no. I'm going I no. I'll read it first. I'll also be reading Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. This one has been a long-awaited read for me. I have been looking forward to reading this for a long time. I am excited about it. I've heard so many good things about it from BookTube, from the For All Nerds podcast. I've just heard, like, um, it, like, I just heard it so good. So I'm just excited to read this. From what it sounds like, there might be some mess in here. There might be some drama. I'm looking forward to it, but we will see. There'll probably be some heartbreak. I don't know, but I'm looking forward to reading it. Also by Mariko Tamaki and by Jillian Tamaki. I'll be reading this one, Summer. I just love the Tamaki's artwork. I've heard so many great things about the Tamaki, so I'm excited to read their stuff. I'll be reading, what, Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me this one, Summer, and Skim. So it's just gonna be pure Tamaki love being shown over here. I know I have not like ventured too far out in my pick so far. It's been pretty like popular booktube stuff, but like these have been on my list for the longest. So let's get through them before we actually get into new books. Also, I'm looking forward to reading Crystal Fighters by Jen and Tyler Bartell. I know that Jen Bartell is Asian. I believe she might be Vietnamese. I might be wrong about that. I'm not sure. But I do know she is an Asian illustrator. And I believe she wrote this. She created it. She did the art and story along with... I'm not sure who Tyler Bartell is. I don't know if that is her brother or her husband or another possible male relation to her. I'm looking forward to reading this. I have been looking forward to reading You Brought Me the Ocean by Alex Sanchez and Julie Motto. Although it is not a story done by, from my understanding, an Asian, like a creative team that includes an Asian author, there is a Asian lead or love interest within the story. So I'm looking forward to reading that. I have also been looking forward to reading this for the longest, although I understand that it is not Asian led, there is an Asian love interest. I am definitely keeping my reading very light for the month because I gotta be responsible, you know? Also, I've never read a manga. It would also be considered like a translated work. Ever since I think Jessica Nicole Dickerson, I think she talked about it. I saw a video where she talked about it and I was like, okay, this sounds good. I'm definitely gonna read this. There are things I can't tell you by Aduko Mofumo Fu. I am looking forward to reading this. It looks like it's gonna be good. It looks, sounds like it's gonna be good. Like I'm here for it. So I'm looking forward to reading that. I think I'll go to, oh my gosh, I forgot what the name of the manga store is. Can you, can you, can you? I will go over there and I will go find there are things I can't tell you. I'm reading all graphic novels and I'm just reading like maybe two or three three actual full like novels and the rest of it is just going to be like graphic novels. 
because I gotta keep it light, but I'm still gonna read a lot. <laughs> but I definitely want to get into more manga, at least more queer manga, like some anything that piques my interest that's exciting. I never thought I'd actually get into manga because I don't know, n none of the store, none of the mangas that came up never seemed to intrigue me or interest me from what I've seen. So now I am looking forward to finding more queer, more LGBTQ, especially, I won't lie, more just very gay manga. I'm definitely looking forward to those. I want to feel something. I want stuff that's just gonna make me feel, you know, something that's just gonna make, uh, I just, I want to feel some heat because... I'm feeling nothing right now. I feel cold and I don't like that. I'm adding one more book to my TBR that I don't know why I completely forgot about this because I bought this and I think I bought this for Asian Readathon either last year or the year before. It has to be like last year I bought it. It is written by Jonathan Luna who I believe is a Filipino. I think he might be Filipino but I know Jonathan Luna for sure. He is Asian so I am looking forward to reading this and I believe the lead is Asian and the the android that he's hooking up with i think she's supposed to be asian as well i'm not sure but i'm looking forward to reading this as well this is the full tbr it's big but most of it is graphic novels so it should be a lot easier than what i've been through in previous tbrs and readathons and years ah. it'll be a lot of light reading but a lot of fulfilling reading at the same time i believe so I'm excited about Asian Readathon. I'm definitely gonna be reading Asian, but I'm definitely going to include watching more movies or any other kinds of TV shows, visual media, maybe even podcasts that are censoring Asian identities and Asian people. And telling Asian stories, I'll be watching Parasite for sure. And I will definitely find any other Asian movies that I am super interested. I know there are some, I think, K-dramas and stuff on Netflix. Like I just put one on my queue. I forgot what the name of it is, but I think I'll watch that too. And I'm gonna include that. And that's gonna be a part. Cause I'm gonna really be out here. I have to keep, I have to catch up on Invincible. I want to catch up on the Shadow and Bone Netflix series. Plus, I also want to watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier, catch up on that. I definitely want to keep my reading very light. I will include links and resources to help in the fight to stop Asian hate. No one should be under that kind of stress, whether you're Asian, Black, LGBTQ, IA+, you should just be able to enjoy and live your life wholeheartedly. So definitely, Check out resources, links in the description. So thank you for spending your time with me. I am out this bitch like fleek. The fuck? Shout out to Peaches. Thank you, girl. Stop Asian hate and Black Lives Matter. Actually, all Black Lives Matter. Period. Paradox. What's up?